Next comedian is really a wonderful friend. I remember a couple of years ago, I was playing in Texas, and there was a series of some devastating tornadoes that wiped out homes and families, and I put together a benefit show at the Improv in Dallas, and this man made a special trip to perform there. He is as talented as he is generous. How about Rich Scheidner? Thank you. Great. Nice ride over here, too. Now, I don't care what time I hit the freeway, what time of day it is. I always hit that one traffic phenomenon, you know, where you're driving and you see that wall of red braking lights in front of you. So you pull up and you stop for about an hour. Then you get up to 50 miles an hour for 30 feet. You stop for another hour and a half, then 60 miles an hour for 20 feet. It's like you're in the middle of a big slinky moving down the freeway. Yeah. And I always keep expecting to see some sort of reason for all this stop and start. Maybe there's a gas truck explosion or someone dumped a bucket of sand on the road or something. There's no reason. I just imagine one guy way up front going, <laughs> Oh, here we go, here we go. No, we're not, no, we're not. We're going for third gear. No, we're not. And you feel like you're behind, so you want to make up time. And then it'll be like a state trooper doing 55, and there's a whole pack of cars following right behind you. I love that. Everyone's waiting for the trooper to pull off so they don't want to get back up to 80 miles an hour again. And sometimes the trooper will stay on the road too long, you know, and someone will lose patience and peel away from the pack at 56 miles an hour. <laughs> they make the move. Everyone else is going, go, man, go. And you know there's a lot of pressure in that car. Here we go, baby. We're going by him now. Don't look at him. Don't look at him. Act like he's not there. Don't look at him. Here we go. We're just about by him. Here we go. Here we go. I drive over alone because uh, my wife is eight and a half months pregnant and I don't, uh, don't let her out of the house much right now. I mean, keep her incubating the way it should be. You know? It's wild, man. We got married June 4th. She got pregnant June 10th. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. It's great, you know. We didn't know at first, you know. It was just kind of like um, uh, I was on the road. I was in Nashville and she was with me and, you know, so we, you know, she was late. You ever hear that, guys? I'm late. She kept saying that. I'm late. The only thing you can say as a guy is, we're well, always late. <laughs> no, you nitwit, I'm late late. We're always, always late late. You know? <laughs> and it's tough on a woman because she doesn't know because the symptoms are the same for beginning the menstrual cycles or for early part of pregnancy. Woman has swollen tender breasts, raging hormones, she's fatigued easily. God could help us out a lot here if he had given a woman different signals. <laughs> like if a woman's pregnant, have her hair shoot straight up in the air. <laughs> Not for the whole nine months, just for a couple of days, you know. <laughs> If it's a boy, shoot the right, a girl, shoot the left, you know? <laughs> you know, have this happen instantaneously moment of conception. So if you're trying to have children, the results immediately. It's good! <laughs> We're very happy, very happy, but it was an accident. I mean, I gotta admit that it was an accident. You know, we didn't plan it, that's what I'm saying. You know? My wife was using birth control and got pregnant anyway. Of course, as soon as I find out, I start strutting around like a rooster. Oh, yeah. Take more to diaphragm, stop my boys. <laughs> you better double up next time, babe, because I'm coming at you. I'm coming at you. <laughs> well, I mean, I just try to help out. You know, I just try to make her feel as comfortable as possible because I can't believe we're not even at the birthing part yet, you know, and how much she's gone through to carry this child. I am convinced that if it was up to guys to have kids, there'd be like eight people on the planet today. That would be it. <laughs> Max, she had morning sickness. I, you know, I'd heard about morning sickness and food cravings, but she had morning sickness. I mean, within the first two weeks, we were in Atlanta, and then, you know, and I was working there, and, and she was getting sick. You know, one morning she was in the bathroom throwing up, and I was in there with her, you know, holding her shoulders in case she actually hit that plunger and got sucked down into it, something like that. Look, <laughs> well, if one person's throwing up, you've got to be in there trying to comfort the other person, right? I mean, you can't be sitting in the other room going, hey, you want to quiet down in there? I can hardly hear the TV with all that racket you're making in there. I'm trying to tell you, I saw her throwing up. She came out of the bathroom, sat on the bed, looked at me and went, is there a Chinese restaurant around here? <laughs> I have thrown up many a time, but never have I gone, sweet and sour pork, that'll do it right there. That'll help, that'll help, definitely that'll help.